Here's Anatolia again. So now we have almost everything to complete our small PWM project. I think we still haven't covered the comparison block. Um, to be honest, there is nothing special and I'm pretty sure that you all can do it yourself. But let's take a closer look. So I have the same process block uh, with the clock and reset in the sensitivity list. And, well, okay, I actually changed the reset values to 1 in all of the blocks because my FPGA port uh, has the reset active 1. Yeah, but uh, the rest is so... Uh, the comparison block itself is very simple. So we have uh, if condition and we compare our input signal with the carrier and uh, when it's more than the carrier, the output signal, the output pulse is set to 1. Otherwise, it's set to zero. So we do it uh, to the signal P out, and then um, the signal is assigned to the output port, to the pulse. So the reason we assign the signal first and only after that the output is that we want to have some reset condition when the signal itself is zero. So the output also would be zero. And uh, yeah, so. What we need to do next, so we'll go back to our diagram, the simulation clock generator, uh, we used it in the simulation and uh, we cannot use it during the actual FPGA programming, so we need to delete it and replace it with something clo uh, called clocking wizard. And um, if you go to the settings, let's take a look. Um, and if you have your your FPGA board, which you're supposed to work with, already selected, this clocking wizard will already know the pins it should connect to, uh, which are reset and clock. So here we see the designer assistant is now available, and we just run the automation and select that we want to automate connection of clock to system clock interface and reset again to reset interface and yeah it's done so basically um, the clock and the reset already set for here what we can do in the wizard itself we also can change the output clock parameters so we can set it to PLL for example the phase lock loop um, and then we can also determine the output clock we want to have or more clocks so now we have 100 megahertz with a 50% duty cycle. Actually, it's uh, enough for what we want to do. So now I just connect this clock to our clock pass. Uh, let's also highlight it. Let's make her an orange. No, it's too bright. Um, yeah, maybe this one. Okay, yeah. And we also can connect the clock. Oh, no the reset, so yeah, let's connect all of them. Uh, what we also want to do, so we have our sine wave and the carrier, but uh, I also would like to see them on the oscilloscope, and for this I already have a DAC PCBs from uh, Digiland, and uh, I would like to use them for this purpose. Yeah, actually we will, I will show you how to write the block, the SPI communication block for the SDACs in some future videos, just stay tuned. And for now we'll just use them as black boxes. Okay, so we here we'll also connect the clocks and resets. And the DAC um, input with 16-bit buses we connect to carrier and sine wave. Okay, and, uh, each block it has four outputs. The data, clocks, uh, chip select, uh, I don't remember what LD stands for, and clock. So these three are like a standard uh, package of ports for SPI protocol. So we also create it here. Now we save it and we can follow this flow here. So we already have the block design, we already simulated it, now we can just run the synthesis. Okay, okay, yes, okay, I want to run everything.
Okay, so the synthesis is now complete. What we can do, we can open the synthesized design and take a look at the pins we have. Yeah, it's taking some time, as always. So here we have our FPGA configuration with different banks um, and two different ports. So I think this B PGA package and if we go here we see that uh, there are some input output ports we have and basically we can select a pin we want for each of our ports and we see that the clock already selected, somewhere there is also reset selected. So we need to do it for the other things. And uh, if we take a look at the FPGA I'm using, it's this basis 3 port from Digiland. It has this uh, uh, 2.54 connectors. And uh, those are called uh, PMOD adapters, and uh, we can connect different interface ports to them. And uh, what I have, I have uh, DAC also from Digiland, which we can plug in here, and I will use these two ports. So we need to um, set the pin names for them. And this one is uh, JB, and this one is uh, JC. So we just search for JB, and here are the pins we have to connect. Okay, so let's uh, do like this, and uh, the configuration is that first one is uh, chip select, the second one is data, third one is LD, and uh, the fourth is uh, SPI clock. So yeah, let's start from clock select, what well, it should be A14, right? Then uh, data A16. LT is B15 and clock is B16. So the second one is JC and here the clock select would be K17. Data is M18, LD and 17 and last but not least the clock is P18. Okay, and the pulse, um, let's make it JA pin number 1, and it is J1. Okay, so now, also uh, very often this default option here becomes source of error. So even if we need 1.8 volts input or output, and we set it as default, when we try to make the implementation or bitstream here, it will draw us an error just because we haven't selected some other option. So it doesn't like having this default. So it's better to choose. And for our case, we need 3.3 volts anyway. So we'll just we'll just set all of them here manually. And what you can also see, we also can select some other configurations like dry strands, slew type, that is slow, fast, and also we can set the uh, pull down, pull up, or uh, high Z, high impedance input. So for this DAC, we don't need anything as it has uh, uh, pulls already in the chip, which we're using. So we just keep it as it is, save it. And it will offer us to create a file for the constraints, for the pin configuration. So let's call it pinout. Simple and yeah. Okay, so now we can run the implementation itself. And I think after we changed the pins and created this uh, constraint for the pins, it will run the synthesis from the beginning. So we'll have to wait again. Okay, so uh, the implementation is uh, finished. What we can do now, we can generate the bitstream. 
and we'll do the same, press OK, OK everywhere and then just wait. OK, so it took a while to make and to generate the bitstream. Now we can see that we can go inside here, uh, hardware manager, and if we select open target and then auto connect, we'll see our FPGA. And I already turned it on, connected it to the uh, computer and yeah, I can select program device and program it. And here in the oscilloscope, when we press the program button, we'll see, yeah, that there's some changes happened. Okay, so we see now our carrier wave. And then also the, the PWM connection. Uh, we can probably stop it. And yeah, let's make it single or maybe yeah, something like this. So we can see the whole the whole period here going on. And uh, yeah, it was not that difficult actually. So the PWM creating the PWM simple PWM is not. Uh, rocket science. Now if I change my channel for the DAC, we'll see that the second channel is programmed for the sine wave. And yeah, let's also oh, plug it in. And here is our sine wave and the PWM. So yeah, that's all for this video and uh, see you the next time.